Now, the best books are made up of stories. And let's face it, the best stories are about bouncing back from failure. I'm Anna David, obsessed with books, a New York Times bestselling author, and the CEO of Legacy Launchpad Publishing. And I only achieved those things because I picked myself up again after failing and found my way to success. And that makes me uniquely qualified to get the best stories about failure and success out of other people. Failure is always a learning experience. So after six months, I told him that I Googled sociopath and he had all of the symptoms and I found myself out of job. At that time, it was supposed to be a side hustle. Well, the side hustle started to make far more money than the real hustle. So I, after six months, I, I quit my job. Welcome to Fail Your Way to Success. Welcome to Fail Your Way to Success, the podcast that is obsessed with fail- failure because it it knows, if the podcast knows that it leads to success. So this is a solo episode um, that is actually about the patron saint of failing your way to success. He is the person mentioned in the introduction. He is the man who was known for wearing black turtlenecks, among many other things. Yes, we are breaking down the failures and successes of the one and only Steve Jobs. So, if some of this you may already know, some of this you may not. Um, what he talked about in this very famous commencement speech that he gave at Stanford, he talked about how he dropped out of college. He dropped out of Reed College. And this was significant for a number of reasons. Primarily, he's adopted and his birth mother had one condition for the birth parents, and that is that the birth parents had to have graduated from college. That's how important this fact was to her. All good. She found the birth parents. Then, back then, they didn't know the gender before the baby was born. It was a boy. Obviously, they wanted a girl. And so it all fell through. And uh, the Steve Jobs' mother found another family. Uh, but they not only hadn't graduated from college, the dad hadn't even graduated from high school. But they swore up and down this kid would graduate from college. So it was a big deal when he dropped out. But unlike many ne'er-do-well, dilettante college dropouts, Steve Jobs did not leave campus after dropping out. But rather than hanging around like that eighth-year senior, you know, that one that that hung around and played hacky sack and got high all day, maybe that was just that was just Trinity College, but he didn't do that. What he did is he stayed, he slept on friends' couches, he ate meals at the Hare Krishna Center, and without the constraints of having to fulfill a major, he was able to take the classes he was interested in, like calligraphy, a completely impractical choice. I mean, what are you going to do with that? Well, what he did with that is he learned about fonts and spacing and sans serif and all of these things. And he created the first personal computer that cared about beautiful topography. And as he famously said in that commencement speech at Stanford, since Windows copied everything that Mac did anyway, the entire personal computing industry is based on that decision. So you could call dropping out of college a major failure, but he turned it into a success. So then he, 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 you know, partners with his neighbor, Steve Wozniak, Woz, he's called. And, um, and by 23, he has amassed a net worth of over a million. Who knows what that is today? A trillion? Billion? I have no idea what the equivalent is today. There's been a lot of inflation. Um, it, estima- it skyrocketed to an estimated 250 million by the time he reached 25. Again, success. So he's a uh, building Apple, um, but there's some. He brings in, um, he brings in um, a CEO, and it goes awry. And basically, this guy he brings in uh, the board of directors. He leads the board of directors for re- requesting Steve Jobs's resignation from the the company he started. So. He goes and he starts another computer company called Next. And um, he builds these computers, but they were really, really expensive, like even by our standards today, like $10,000. So they were totally impractical. Nobody was, that was never going to take off for the masses. And it took 
um, eight years, but the, the company did become profitable. So then he he goes, uh, it seems like a major departure, and in many ways it was. He becomes the executive producer um, of a movie at this brand new company called Pixar. That, that movie turns out to be Toy Story, which is re- incredibly successful. And uh, then Disney acquires Pixar. Um, and uh, so he's back. He's very successful again. Um, but then Apple is completely not thriving in his absence. And so they acquire Next Computer, Next Computers, his company, and basically bring Steve Jobs back to Apple. So there he is. Um, he's back. He, you know, it's thriving again. And then, of course, um, in 2009, Anna here. Now, this podcast, did you know it? It's sponsored by Legacy Launchpad, my company. We're the top book publishing company for entrepreneurs who want to launch their legacy and build their authority with a book. Our books have made our clients into best-selling authors who've gone on to quadruple their business revenue, land TEDx talks, get on major TV shows, and essentially transform their lives as a result of their books. For more info and to find out about our services, go to www.LegacyLaunchPadPub.com. Now back to the show. Turned out he needed a liver transplant. um, And he, in 2011, he resigned because of the discovery of a terminal pancreatic tumor. And he passed away six weeks later. So one of the... One of the many interesting things about Steve Jobs is how much his personal belief system created a company legacy um, that was all about innovation. It was very, Apple is very clear about who its customer is. It's a consumer that will pay more for uh, qu- high quality products. And um, he has he has said so many things um, about failure. Um, there is this great interview that I will link to in the show notes um, where it's like completely like janky computer equipment, terrible lighting. Um, it looks completely random and completely off the cuff and completely not uh, not rehearsed and not uh, and very, very honest. And he talks about how um, when he was 12 years old, um, he called up Bill Hewlett of Hewlett Packard and he Apparently, Bill Hewlett was listed in this thing called the phone book, and he called him up, and he's like, hey, I want to build a frequency counter, whatever the hell that is. And apparently, Bill Hewlett thought that was cool and cute and helped him and then hired him. So in this interview, he talks about how the reason people don't succeed is that they're not willing to try. Um, and how he says, basically, um, you know, he's never, he has found when he picks up the phone and asks people things, um, he found before he was the, the, you know, name brand he was, that people were for the most part really receptive and he tried to sort of pay that forward. Um, he also said, I'm convinced that about half of what separates successful entrepreneurs from the non-successful ones is pure perseverance. It is so hard. You pour so much of your life into this thing. There are such rough moments that most people give up. I don't blame them. It's really, really tough. And so he, of course, is, uh, you know, an emblem of per pure perse- perseverance. Try to say that fast very many times. In the Stanford speech, um, he has this other amazing quote. Where he says, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You could only connect them looking backwards. So if, so you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something. Your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart, even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. Kind of like the Robert Frost poem. Um, I took the road less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Uh, Certainly, leaving the company you founded is not the well-worn path. Going into, um, you know, working uh, at an animation studio in 
Northern California, not the well-worn path. Dropping out of college, not a well-worn path, but the one that made all the difference. And he also said, remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. All fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. And of course, that's all the more poignant because he died young. Um, He also said in that Stanford commencement speech, I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again, less sure about everything. It freed me to enter one of the most creative periods of my life. And I think that is really the most significant contribution Steve Jobs made to the uh, concept of failing your way to success. That one of the great benefits of failure is that it takes all the air out of the balloon and suddenly you have a beginner's mind again. Because of course, I think, you know, what can happen, and if you look at someone like Elon Musk, um, try, you know, taking over Twitter and at the point, at the time of this recording, seemingly not doing a terrific job with that, is, you know, you start to drink your own Kool-Aid, you start to think that you're brilliant at everything, you start to not listen to people, and failing is a, a, the great humbler. And uh, as we tumble, we humble. God, that is a great catchphrase. I have no idea if someone else said it already. But um, but I think that that is one of the great lessons that Steve Jobs taught about uh, failure, which is use it. Take advantage of the failure as an opportunity to go, OK, I've got a fresh slate. Let's start again and um, and embrace that humility. Because, of course, getting fired from Apple was not his only failure. Um, he had Apple products that failed um, and and he continued to bounce back. So there you have it. My breakdown of how Steve Jobs failed his way to success. See you next time. Hal Elrod literally died and then came back to life and then wrote a book that sold millions of copies and then almost died again and then got a rare form of leukemia and is somehow the most positive person I know. And I was lucky enough to get him on the pod talking about all of it. That's next week on Fail Your Way, so please don't miss it. Thanks for listening to Fail Your Way to Success. Now, if there's anything I love more than a failure to success story, it's a review. So I hope you'll think about leaving one. For more information about the show, go to failyourway.com. And for more information about publishing a book about how you failed your way to success, or just to find out more about what I do, go to legacylaunchpadpub.com.